Well, morning folks, welcome to Coffee with Job. Uh, from a very wet Sydney, we're back into Job chapter 40 and just one verse, because I think this is really important. You know, it's funny, here we're very concerned about flooding just now. Most of the world, a lot of the world anyway, is concerned about the situation in Ukraine, the horrendous situation there and all the spin-offs that could come from that. And we do, I think, really important as these things are, I do th sometimes think we get obsessed. So, and I'm thinking about all the major historical events that have occurred during my life. Remember things like the Falklands War or um, the miners' strike with Thatcher or, 9-11 or the Iraq war or I don't know Brexit and Trump and just so many different things the bushfires here COVID and you know all these things come and go but when we go to God's Word for me there's something that gives it a much bigger perspective I think one of the problems, for example, with the Ukraine situation is people comment, and we comment from a very limited perspective, with very limited knowledge. I'm watching celebrities and so on give us their considered opinions with their limited knowledge on, on Ukraine. And, and that bothers me because it bothers me that how little I actually know about it as well. And we need the kind of bigger picture of... of what does God say? And, and here in Job chapter 40, verse 6, And the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm, Brace yourself like a man, I will question you, and you shall answer me. Now, these next, this next chapter, next couple of chapters, is God's answer to evil. And that's such a difficult subject. I've just finished reading, and how pretentious is this? I've just finished reading Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil. And to be honest, it's just an evil book. It's a messed up book. It's all over the place. And you know, it actually, I can see how it did help lead to Hitler, this idea of the strong man and the elite determining what's right and wrong. Well, here God begins by saying, you've got to brace yourself because I'm going to ask you. I think it was Bertrand Russell who, in a kind of early version of evangelism explosion question, God asking you, why do you think you should let, why I should let you into my heaven? Bertrand Russell suggested that when he met God, he would say, why didn't you give us more evidence? Now, when I get that quoted to me at times, I say to people, you have no idea what you're talking about. You are not going to be asking God questions. He's going to be asking you questions. Now, what Job does here, he's, he's asked God to continue. He's gone from, as we saw before, how can I answer him, to I will answer, to like a prince I will approach him. Now he's saying there is a time to be silent. And we saw that uh, when we looked at verses 1 to 5. But the Lord says to him, I'm going to now question you. Now what would God say to us? What kind of questions do you think we could be asked? I think there are some really, really important questions. For example, what did you do with my son? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Did you accept him? Did you believe in him? Did you trust him? When Russell says, you didn't give me evidence, God can say, I gave you my son. What more evidence do you want? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Matthew 16, verse 13. Some say John the Baptist and others Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Who do you say I am? And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. What do you think of Christ? And then, I mean, God says, this is my beloved son. What do you think of Christ? Will you take Christ? And then this question, I, I mean, I, I came across so many, I was thinking about this. What have you done with your life? Luke 6, 46, why do you call me Lord, Lord, not do what I say? Why do you acknowledge God? Why do you say you believe in God and not do what I say? Another one is how have you atoned for your sin? Well, you, you say you'll stand before God and say I've done this good, but it doesn't match up. How do you atone for your sin? And then I love this question that Jesus asks, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his lifespan? 
If you then cannot even do a very little thing, why do you worry about other matters? I remember hearing a sermon once, I think it was Donald McLeod going down saying, uh, imagining Jesus going down to church saying, who asked you to do this? Who asked you to do this? Why are you doing this? Do you know, we have a, we don't, we have a certain arrogance, don't we? We feel, yeah, the prerogative is on us asking God. He owes us an explanation. And whilst it's not wrong to ask questions, it is wrong to do so in the wrong manner. And we ourselves need to get to that point where we realize that we have to be braced because God has got questions to ask us. How will you answer? I think my answer has to always be in Christ. So anyway, hopefully we'll be a bit drier tomorrow and we shall see you then. God bless you and may it be that he would bring peace in this oh so war-torn world. Bye.